right, we're going to call the general government committee meeting to order. Looking for a motion to approve the agenda. So move. Second that. Any discussion? There's a item 15. We need to move to next month. Uh, Chad is going to give us annual report. If we need to move. 15 will move to next month. Anything else on the agenda? Not all in favor? Aye. Right. <coughs> About our minutes from July 8th. No. Oh, I'll second it. Second on the minute. Yeah, a couple of questions. Uh, page four of the packet, page three of the minutes. Uh, third pro pro paragraph, the last three lines says Corporation Council advised the committee that a form of the county board is present and recommended that no formal action regarding the approval of the funding request be made. Chair Arcan called for a voice vote on the motion. The motion carried by unanimous voice vote. Did we approve those three items or no. what was the motion? I didn't say that. The motion was to recommend the, the county board. <laughs> I don't think it said recommended in the first paragraph. Was it something you want changed on the minutes? Uh, well, it, it was there a sent motion, Nelson Pritchard, to approve the administrator to include the historical society funding request for an additional $2,600. And I guess that was the motion. It does say that Supervisor Nelson amended his motion with the following two items. Uh, and that was require, I think that was adding to the first motion, as I re recall. I believe so. <clears throat> I don't know if we were authorized and in including in the budget or if it were make simply making a recommendation to the board. I think the way it was worded, we were authorizing the administrator to include it in the budget. Right. So then that budget that he will present the full board would have to approve or disapprove. So it, no, it took no formal action on the on the funding request itself other than to say yes, the administrator can include it in his recommended budget. The same as we'll do today. Right. Yes. After we get a presentation. We'll either recommend to approve or maybe recommend not, not to it. not to include it in the administration. And then, but it's not binding for me. Correct? Well, correct. Yeah. I still think it's confusing the way it's written because we we took action. We did take action. Is you're saying? Russ, yeah, so we, we took action. Yeah. Not understanding the corporate council's advice, apparently. No, the the advice was not to approve the funding because that would be. Binding the full right. county board, it. right? Not to approve the funding, but to approve including it in the presented budget, right? It's a nuance, but I, I think you guys are safe and fine. How it, how it I was confused by it, and I still am. All right. Anything else on the minutes? If not, all in favor? Anyone has any conflicts of interest? Any matters? Are there any public comments? Anybody check? Another group? They were going to, if they had anyone for public comment, I think they were going to send it all. Right? Correct, unless they called in. So, if you 
you find one or one comes up, let us know and we can. This looks like plenty of light here. All right, any supervisors present, not seated as committee members that have any information? You don't have any announcements or committee information. All right, we're going to have a presentation discussion a central municipal planning. I think we allowed what 10 minutes for a presentation and five minutes for. Okay, do it. Okay, good morning, everyone. My name is Lynn Nelson. I'm the executive director of the West Central Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission. Thank you for allowing me to attend your meeting and present. Um, first of all, I wanted to apologize for not making the meeting in July. Um, our commission or our board meets second Thursday of the month, every other month at 10 o'clock a.m. So exact same time. And I had 21 commissioners meeting on some pretty important things for our organization. So again, my apologies for not attending. I'm, I'm glad it worked for me to come today. Um, I'm going to do a short presentation on our organization, who we are and what we do, um, our 2020 funding request, and then uh, just a little bit on some of the things that we've been working on in Polk County. Um, you'll also see that there's a packet of information at each of your desks. And that information really supplements what I'm going to be talking about, supports some of the items, and then there's also a copy of the actual PowerPoint in the packet, along with my business card. Should you have any questions after the fact, please feel free to call me with questions or any follow up that you have that you might have not thought of today. So, okay. Um, so the West Central Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission is a government entity that was created under state statute. Um, it may appear that we're more of a state agency after being created by a state statute, but that's not really the case because we were created in 1971 after all the counties within our region petitioned to have a regional organization providing regional and local services to this area when there wasn't already one in place. We're one of nine regional planning commissions in the state, represented by number nine in the brown area there. We cover seven counties, inclusive of Polk County. We like to think we're one of the best regional planning commissions in the state, but we also are really sure that we cover the best counties in the state. We might be a little bit biased, but that's what we do. So, okay. Um, we're governed by a 21 member board that's made up of three representatives from each of our seven counties. And here's a list of those representatives. You probably recognize your Polk County representatives that sit on our board, including Tracy LeBlanc, Tom Magnifici, and Steve Warndahl. The goal of our organization is to assist units of government in planning for the physical, social, and economic development needs of the region. And that's really what the state statutes say. It's pretty broad, so it allows us to really do a whole lot of different things depending on the needs of the region and what's going on in the counties. We have a staff of 14 and the services that we provide fall into four general categories, including economic development, transportation, community development, and natural resources. I'm going to cover some of the things we've been working in in each of those areas in Polk County, but before I do that, I wanted to touch on our 2022 funding request. So we are requesting $34,195 for 2022. That amount is determined by our commission um, based on a mill rate that's applied to equalized real estate valuations for each of the seven counties in our region. So the total amount we receive from the seven counties is around $275,000. Those funds are used in a variety of ways, including as a match, for other funding sources that we secure. So your funds help us to leverage other funding sources so that the money you provide us for staffing goes even further. So for example, um, the Federal Economic Development Agency provides our organization with $70,000. 
which we have to match with $70,000, which this is one of the funding sources that we use to do that. And so then the $70,000 we get from them is all of, all of a sudden $140,000 that we can provide in staffing assistance to the region for economic development assistance. Um, we also provide technical assistance and outreach throughout the region with those funds. And it helps us to secure additional funding sources for specific projects. For example, for your housing studies that were done in 2020, we were able to take these funds, use it to staff um, writing some community development block grant funds, use that money to apply it to the housing studies so that two thirds of the cost was covered. And then the local units of government and the county only had to pay one third. That's really where your contribution to our organization in 2020, um, I wanted to do a quick look at some of the things that we've provided in Polk County. A lot of this is also in your packet and included in our 2020 annual report and that of the regional business fund. I'll skip the two, the first two items that look at business assistance we provide because I'll summarize that in 2021. But beyond that, a few of the things that we worked on, um, we set up a disaster recovery loan pool with funds from the, uh, from the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. And in this case, when we say disaster, we're talking about storms, not COVID, this was pre-pandemic. And so the 2019 storms that occurred in Polk and Barron counties, the wind storms, we were able to secure funding for any business that was impacted by that. And in Polk County, we did provide one loan to a business outside of Turtle Lake um, to assist them with some cleanup activities following the storm. Um, additionally, some of the things that we worked on um, include, we worked on a Wisconsin Department of Transportation, Transportation Alternatives or CAP application for a bike and pedestrian plan, which will be implemented. And we'll, we're starting to talk about that with county staff, probably be looking at 2022 for that. Um, completed housing studies, um, we are working on a regional safe routes to school program, which includes plans for Amory and Osceola. We worked on a Staples Lake management plan, securing funds for that work. Um, worked on an application for the city of Amory to secure funding for infrastructure improvements through the Federal Economic Development Administration. And then just a lot of outreach and educational activities, including a broadband toolkit, acting as a data resource and we held educational brown bags on a variety of topics as well. Okay. Um, moving into 2021, so really the first half of this year, um, some of the things we did, if we look at the first bullet, we provided staff to the nonprofit regional business fund. That's a fund that provides four programs for financing to assist businesses throughout the region. It's a revolving loan fund program, a facade loan program, the economic development administration, revolving loan fund, and a micro loan fund. For 2020, um, we were able to assist seven businesses in Polk County, including here's a sample, Ruby Mays, Treasures and Amory, Alibi Bar in Amory, and Joey Monson Photography in Clear Lake. Um, the seven loans totaled $195,000 in assistance. And moving into 2021, for the first part of this year, we have assisted three businesses with $393,320. Three businesses just in Polk County. So that's a really great funding source that many of your businesses take advantage of. And I know many of you are involved in that process. Um, additionally, we worked on COVID recovery resources trying to help units of government and businesses really gain a handle on all of the sources of funds that are out there. I think it's really a challenge right now just because there's so much money. Like, How do you even start to know what is applicable? So we've made an effort to try to provide that type of assistance. Um, we're working on a community development block grant, microenterprise grant program. And that program provided $5,000 grants to small businesses owned by low and moderate income individuals. Um, so that's, that's, let's see, for, there's a, there's a chart in your packet, but there were 180 applicants that have applied for that program for a total of $891,000.
Of that, 30 were located in Polk County and will be receiving $5,000 grants under that program. Um, another program that might be of interest that really just got kicked off last week is called the Main Street Bounce Back Program. And that's a program funded through the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. And it allows any new or expanding business that moves into vacant commercial space anywhere in the county to receive a grant for $10,000. That's really a great way to assist new and expanding businesses and put some of your vacant buildings into use. So we're looking forward to that. It was kicked off last week, and I think as of yesterday, we've had 75 inquiries on that program and already five applications. So I'm hopeful that a lot of county businesses are able to take advantage of that. There's a flyer in your packet too. So if you know of anyone that could use that money, please share that with them. Um, you know, a, a whole variety of other things, as you can see here, we're working with Staples Lake, comprehensive lake management plan, safe routes to school. I put Polk County Transit Study on there. And the only reason I put that on there is it's a request to have a conversation on that topic. And that's really what we're, what we do. Um, you know, if someone has an idea, we're happy to come and talk about it. Sometimes it leads to a project, sometimes it's not. But that's kind of the whole idea behind having our staff available to provide assistance. So you can look at the rest of those things. Um, we have time. Okay. And moving into 2022, many of those same types of activities we will be working on, um, providing ongoing technical assistance advice and advice to units of government, economic development corporations, and others, continuing work on business finance programs through the Regional Business Fund, Disaster Recovery, Main Street Bounce Back, starting to look at a possible bike and pedestrian plan that will dovetail with your comprehensive trails plan that's being worked on, um, safe routes to school planning, possible county hazard mitigation plan updates, completion of a Staples Lake management plan, and then provision of assistance in investigating and securing funds for a wide variety of other projects as that comes up. So that's a real quick look at sort of who we are and the types of things that we've been working on in Polk County. Transportation. Um, yes. I was looking at 2021 and uh, there was a discussing a potential Polk County transit study yeah. in 2022, and that doesn't appear. It. Is there a decision not to pursue a study of transportation? And I want to make my observation that in Polk County, we have zero public transportation. Um, so that's really just a conversation request that I had this week with Tim Peterson. He asked if we would come and talk about that topic, look at a potential study or what could be done with that. So I didn't put it, so that's something that we're talking about. I don't know where that's going. Um, it'll be based on the conversations we have and what the county really wants to do. Um, so I didn't put it in 22 because I'm not sure what's going to happen. But it could end up in 2022. Another observation. I think a lot of our uh, senior people, and particularly the very senior people, are not going to be riding bicycles on a bicycle trail. They probably need some other means of public. Any other questions? No? Good. Okay. Take it from here. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Is there a motion to recommend funding? I move that we recommend funding. We're in the discussion stage of our motion. Um, and all the other funding requests we had, we had put some contingencies on it. I don't know if, if we want to just one, but we required the agencies cross participation with other related agencies. And that one of the conditions would be that we should hold the agencies accountable for the term terms of their MOU. Want that 
included in your motion, or I think we should. Yeah. Consistent. Um, if I may, I think it, the, the one specific one that I'm thinking of was we wanted some crossbreeding, so to speak, between tourism, museum, and EDC. Uh, we have, as as Lynn mentioned, two supervisors plus an out a citizen member there. Um, so we already have three people on their committee, and it's eight that's counties. Suffice. Pardon. Does we feel that that is suffice? I, yeah, and I think that's their bylaws <clears throat> and so on. What I will say this is, I know Lynn more from my work at EDC because of their economic development role, uh, and now I work with her. You know, transportation study, and, and we're talking about, you know, if we decide to move forward with the sports rec complex, they have the expertise and the resource and the connections to help us. Um, so I don't know that, I mean, we already have somebody on there, but I don't know that we want to say they have to have an EDC or a regional planning commission person on tourism and required of the other one. The other ones is required because it's all within Polk County and they're all kind of related to one another. Well, and I guess what I'm saying, I don't know if they could put that on their board to say, oh, Polk right. County has to pardon. By statute, and I don't think we have an MOU with them, do we? No, we're not required to not have them because you, but... we're instructed and formed by statute. All right, so we may not. Your motion will stand as you made it. Yep. Any more discussion on the motion? Not all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that'll move us to a review and consideration of recommendation regarding. All right, we're going to have a discussion and an update regarding planning, funding of county board priorities and general government. And broadband. I can give you a, a brief update and then I'll turn it over in case Mo wants to add anything on parks and trails. But regarding broadband, um, we've heard about ARPA funds, we've heard about other funds coming to the state uh, from a variety of sources. In addition to that, we've had, and I forget the terminology, uh, the auction of rights to expand broadband in the county, the rural, what was it called, the rural auction. So we've had companies bidding on land for availability to areas within Polk County. Uh, that, like CenturyLink, did not fulfill their obligation, so they said, you know, PSC or the Fed said, we're going to take that land. Anybody else want access to this land? Uh, so I've talked with one of the companies who's picked up a good portion of Polk County. And uh, in my initial discussions, they are moving full steam ahead to, uh, and they have, I think it was like 1,400 homes they're going to access with high speed internet. Uh, and then Lakeland, of course, communications is doing it. Uh, Northwest Communications, all the others are still doing it. The point I'm trying to make is we were ready to pull the trigger on another study to look at what types of technology might be best suited for parts of Polk County. But as it looks now, after talking with some consultants and some other people, they're just saying, you're going to get a lot of resources coming into Polk County to spread broadband. So we're going to hold back on that study so that we don't just spend the money to spend it and uh, work with our local broadband providers as well as the new ones that are coming into the area. So I'm encouraged by that. In fact, if you all know Cliff Albertson, who is uh, a consultant with, uh, I think it's called Badger Communications, you know, his, his recommendation was, he said, sit tight, it's coming. Uh, John Clapp at uh, Lakeland Communications says within a few years, 
his words, where we're going to have this county covered. Now, that doesn't mean everybody's going to have it. They're going to be those isolated places. Uh, but this, uh, and I forgive me, I can't remember the name of the other company who bid on the, the auction, but uh, they also specialize in uh, towers that have direct sight to home. So even if you're not on uh, fiber optic cable line, if they can get sight to your house, they can send you high-speed internet. So lots of different technologies are coming forward, and, and I think we're making progress there. He's authorized to study, so you're saying that's not old? Yeah. Well, had we talked to anyone who was going to do the study, or, or we had gotten that far? We didn't really authorize a study yet. I think it was, uh, you know, we had discussed doing it. Uh, we reviewed what St. Croix County did, and we were patterning our RFPs. We were going to have to submit an RFP uh, or, or put it out. We were patterning it after what St. Croix County did, but there were some differences. It was going to be about $75,000, we think. There's a big focus, as you well know, the American uh, Rescue Plan Act, uh, their final rule on broadband. Mm -hmm. areas that, uh, and there are deadlines on spending of the American Rescue Plan fund. I think all of it has to be spent by December 31 or it has to be and if we targeted right it's committed, committed. Uh, and if we're going to use any of that for broadband, we need to be discussing it sooner rather than just sitting back and waiting to see what happens. We're not sitting back and waiting. I I, I wouldn't well, interpret I that. I don't mean to put put a wrong wrong twist on, but I, there's yeah. no deadline on what you're talking about here of these private companies, uh, what they're coming up with. Yeah, well, they, they do have deadlines. I think they have to. They're waiting for the the government to give them the okay to go ahead and start. Uh, to start what? Start laying cable. And what government is giving that authority? Federal. Because of these rural <clears throat> auction funds. Are you, are you referring like to, <clears throat> didn't say Cray County just allocate a million um, broadband out of that? I don't know. Out of their, yeah. out of their, yeah. out of their yeah, American I, rescue plan. I, I am in a broader sense. I'm a little concerned. We've got currently our $4.25 billion. We've got to come up with what we're going to spend on, spend it on. I think we, the only thing that's pending is a committee of the whole discussion next week. Uh, that, I think it's useful. And Chad had indicated he would get an executive summary of that out, but it, the regulations themselves are 120 pages long. There's a very strong emphasis on broadband. I think we need to be aware of that and how it relates to what we're doing here. And given that it matches up with the priority that we've established for Just suggesting that we probably should be fairly sharply focused on what is, in fact, likely to happen. Thinking of it, would or could play. I just have a have a comment about broadband. And it's my understanding we have until 2024 to obligate the funds, but we have until 2026 to spend the money. So. Um, I, from what I know and have learned about broadband and everything that's becoming available, uh, some of that to qualify for, there's places in Polk County that are not going to qualify for that um, because their service is not poor enough to meet the guideline of needing help with broadband. And I'll use Osceola for an example. Everybody's broadband, broadband. Now, when you when the uh, 
seeds are tested in the community, we don't qualify because the seeds are too high. So there is going to be a lot of, of money kind of thrown at this. And I think that actually because of that, it's something we may need to, I guess I would agree in uh, holding off and seeing how some of it develops. We don't want to wait till the last minute, but maybe some of that money could be shifted elsewhere if there are a lot of resources out there. I mean, putting it all towards, or, or putting a check towards broadband for the sake of doing that when uh, there are other places that may need it as well. I guess I just am kind of cautious about that because there is so many resources going to be allocated to it and qualifying factors to get that. I didn't want to suggest for a minute that they were doing it for the sake of doing it. Oh, no, no, I'm, I didn't take it that way. I'd like to have a sharper vision of what is yeah. back at happening or hear this for one something else for all the agencies involved. Sean, having that we know that we've got a finger on the pulse, we have a clear understanding of where things stand, make some estimate for me. It would be nice to have some. I agree with you, Mike. It would be nice to have some maybe executive summary and uh, kind of some of this condensed down for us a little bit. Make it a little easier to understand. And Mr. Pritchard, we did send out an executive summary. So it's it's available. The executive summary on the ARPA funds were sent out. When might we see that? They came out about a week ago, two weeks ago. Is that different, Vince, from what you put out on um, what we had talked at Committee of the Whole last month about um, municipalities or entities uh, submitting projects for the County Board's evaluation? Oh, yeah, it's different. What what okay. I think it came from the clerk's office to all of you, a summary. Maybe that's right. Oh, okay. I, I totally missed it. Okay. And, and, but you're right. The broadband is a very much an emphasis in ARPA. Now, we, we also have the opportunity to spend money in other ways, which is what we're going to discuss in the committee as a whole. And, I, and I'll kind of present kind of categories of projects and we can decide. But in addition to ARPA funds, there's there are a lot of federal funds in addition to ARPA and state funds that are also coming toward broadband. So that's one of the arguments is, is are there other projects that we can use ARPA funds for because we're getting this money and, and resources from other places? Yeah, and the other, these other funds, not they're not necessarily coming to the county, but they're maybe going to other entities. Or I don't know. But they might, yeah. Dep different grants. Possibility county. If there's some particular vital role that the county could or should be. All right, what can you give us on the parks and trails? Well, I will just say in, in the last mo, if he wants to add any updates, you know, if you recall in this year's budget after the sale of the lime quarry, we allocated two hundred thousand dollars. And I'll just say Mo and the staff that has been created there is doing a good job of spending efforts and initiatives on improving what we have. And then we're also obviously investing with Alta and PTAG to come up with a comprehensive plan. And, and so far, I think the, the comments and the feedback has been uh, people are noticing uh, improvements, in, you know, in the parks and trails and the maintenance of them. So, Mo, do you want to add? Sure. Um, some of the projects that we uh, kicked off the ground this year were um, the Sterling parking lot, the ATV group that's been um, graveled and redone, uh, the Trade Lake, Long Trade Lake boat landing, the concrete's been repaired there at that ramp. Uh, we roughed in the new parking lot for approximately seven stalls for trailer parking, just waiting on pavement on that one. Uh, we expanded the lot down at the head, uh, Cattail Head Trail. Uh, that's waiting on pavement uh, there. I've uh, been working through the budget process and our CIP, you'll see with the budget when Vince has his budget out there on our long-term plan for improving our parks with playground equipment. Uh, adding some line items in for uh, trail maintenance for summer and winter. Uh, not going off of the uh, snowmobile grant, which is used for the snowmobile clubs. 
Uh, also adding um, line items for uh, grant match fundings from DNR. You know, we apply for these projects, they're due in April, but you don't hear till later on. But we need that money encumbered earlier on in that year so we can get them done in the same year. Otherwise, we have a year lag all the time on this stuff. Um, so we're uh, getting kind of aggressive with going through those processes and uh, maintaining our uh, trails is looking at, uh, you'll see some new equipment naturally so that um, uh, staff is doing some of this maintenance and grading and stuff out. So working pretty hard trying to get that uh, moving forward. Hey, any comments? Questions? All right, we're going to have a discussion regarding other Wisconsin counties recycling. Discussion. Three, two, one. Operations report prices of various items. As you recall, last month we passed out ordinances for everyone from uh, relating counties. Also, this week we sent out uh, kind of an update, a report for the recycling center that shows some of the other counties and what they're doing. You guys got to have other copies. Here's. Yeah, we'll have that in the next was it mailed out, I believe, Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah. Um, and going through the ordinances and looking at that, you can see there's a little different disparity in the ordinances between different counties. Um, they all mandate recycling. Um, they all mandate it in, in a little bit of a different way. So I guess the discussion that's happening is, is moving forward and next steps on the ordinance and how we're going to uh, next step what you want to see in the ordinance. Uh, some of the ordinances specifically spell out special event projects. Uh, some do not. Um, others uh, mandate curbside recycling. Others have alternatives. Like our, our policy, our ordinance does uh, mandate recycling, um, we, but we do have an alternative. It's a county drop box that we take up at our service. So the question, the, um, the discussion is more on what you want to see in the rewrite of the ordinance. Um, some of those items, especially events, uh, Part of the our ordinances, we are the responsible unit. Other counties um, allow municipalities, if they don't want to be part of the ordinance, they can opt out and be, have their own recycling program and become their own ordinance. Take it on themselves. So just kind of open up for discussion on next steps. Um, do you want staff to take a shot at? Um, I can rewrite the ordinance, add in uh, players on both both sides of county owned drop boxes, municipality owned drop boxes, and let you guys look at that as a draft ordinance. Um, or do you have some recommendations that you'd like me to add into that ordinance? Yes, I think more if you could bring some new staff, bring something back to us. Okay. Obviously, if you spend any time going through there, it's all over the board, but I think in order for us to make any real good decisions, I think we got to get some form of consolidation. So I think you can take a look at with staff and understand what we currently have and what we can manage, and then what things you can pull from these others that may tighten up our our ordinance and, and do so, and then present that to us, and allow us to go through that, unless somebody has something specific that they picked up from there that they wanted to go through with. Okay. Um, um, just for my salary, I'm going to be looking at the Entity, the uh, responsible unit that was mandated by the DNR and the state. Um, I'm I'm fine with that. Um, I think that um, it would be a burden for some of the municipalities to try to take this on. They're not necessarily 
equipped to deal with it and maybe we are better to help them through that and to improve things for the ones that don't have uh, as much full-time staff or are maybe more rural. I don't know if this is something that would need to be in an ordinance or be appropriate for an ordinance or not. It's maybe more of a policy decision um, you know, that we would expand to the uh, locations of the uh, recycling um, bins to every township having easy access so people don't have to uh, go so far as my, as far as mandating curbside recycling. Um, I guess I feel like I don't know enough about that. I'd like to learn more about that. Is that something that's feasible out in a rural area? I don't really know. I don't know that much about it. I would like to learn more about that. That's something uh, you know that would be feasible or not uh, to do and what type of cost burden would be associated with that as well. Um, it probably, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm thinking that it would be additional costs for the residents and if residents are satisfied having easier access to bins where they live uh, and that's something the county can provide for them that might be a more welcome alternative to that. I know it's easier in villages and cities to do uh, curbside pickup uh, because of the density um, of the service but you know I understand also that throughout the whole county that may not be as well. Right. well as an option. Uh, either or or the other let's do Herbert Michael oh, here from the state with that. We had a county wide ordinance and then would you allow an individual municipality to have their own approval of the county or what they were doing as an individual entity because you're right, the rural communities, the, the expense to having curbside in Lamb Falls is considerably different than it is in Osceola, town of Osceola. So I think your point, if you had a county ordinance that was laid out with the option of a local municipality having their own that would be approved in the county, if that would if that oversight could be there or not, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I, I'd be interested to learn more about that. Um, we, we want to make improved recycling without making it uh, burdensome. Uh, you know, and of course, um, I don't want to stray too far off, but maybe when we get to the discussion about the prices of things, there's some things we could talk about there as well. Um, I kind of like Barron County. First, they have a different, they have waste energy facility and an incinerator. So they do have a small market. Where they separate out some stuff, uh, items that are also in, in the back of the waste energy one next to the bus. And so I don't know because of that factor if that how big of a difference that makes is applicable to what we could could not. Looking okay, at the Oak County ordinance. Um, First thing was that there's a mandatory recycling. And that basically everyone must either either separate or recycling the material recyclable material from solid waste generated in the county. Or send the material to a licensed processing facility that recovers for recycling those materials from solid waste in as pure a form as is technically feasible. And if a person opted for, or a person including a company or business or a multifamily dwelling and so on, if they opted for separating or recycling the materials from the solid waste, doesn't say what you do then. You pile it in your garage or in your backyard or what do you, what do, you do with it if you don't send it to a licensed recycling center? Um, that was written, that's, that, that's data when recycling started. Basically, what it's saying is you're, 
you're mandated to separate them out for recycling at your curbside, or you can take your recyclables somewhere to a facility that's going to go. It doesn't say that. Kind of a roundabout way is what it's saying is you either separate them out from where what, what, what's changed in the industry is now we have single stream recycling. Yeah. Like my curbside is single stream recycling. Everything goes in one bin. They take it and go. Um, where the industry started was you separated out individual bins between your glass, plastic, and, and cardboard. And that's when the ordinance was written back in the 90s, um, is what was done. And that's. So it needs to be yeah, updated. Yeah, they're updated. So what, what, uh, I guess the point I'm making, I, or a point I want to make, is that I think throughout Polk County, that the municipalities, both the intergovernment townships, they all have some different. Approach or not by any means uniform. 8.3.10 says haulers that serve an incorporated city, which would be St. Croix Falls uh, or Village, shall provide a system for the collection of the material specified recyclable material from each single family residence, two to four unit residence that. Meets the requirements and so on. Well, and a specific thing, and I raised this point, or when I got a letter from Waterman, they suspended picking up recyclables, and I wondering if they are in compliance with that 8.3.10 in doing so, because they're. Not that not is a hauler that is not picking up recyclable at this point in time. Correct. Not according. Not according to the way the ordinance is written, which the city would have the option then to switch haulers. My understanding is that the city, in this case, St. Croix Falls, has no contract with Waterman or Waste Management. Those are the two haulers in the city, but it's strictly between residents and. So, what I'm suggesting here is, I think we need to take a look at how. And Amory, I think, contracts with the haulers and, and uh, then the residents of Amory. Yes, yeah, so they're not. The city. They're not in compliance in Amory either. Uh, in Amory, they were picking up curbside recycling, um, and that was available. But then now he has said that he won't pick it up until. Some decisions are made with the county because of the tipping fee. Amory also kind of let them off the hook in a gray area because the contract they have with Amory says they will provide that service and that they will pay the tipping fees. But the city has kind of let them off the hook with that and, and they've gotten legal advice, you know, on what this may be a gray area, what's enforceable and what's not. So they're really kind of taking a wait and see attitude that this is a temporary situation that it's not being picked up and they're waiting on the county to make decisions regarding the recycling center and the ordinance. Which um, I guess a question I have for everybody that I've been thinking about um, is how are we going to develop an ordinance when we haven't made a decision whether or not the recycling center is going to stay open. Because the future of the recycling center is going to be play a big role in what we put in an ordinance on whether or not we even have a recycling center available. That's a question that I have. I don't know if anybody else feels that way or not. But um, so we can do an ordinance, but then three months from now or two months from now, Depending upon what decisions are made with the recycling center, are we going to have to totally overhaul it one way or the other? So I'm in favor of doing something with an ordinance and having an ordinance and developing an ordinance, but um, I kind of don't want to do it twice, depending upon how that goes. That's just kind of my insight into it for what it's worth. I think you need to be careful with ordinances. A contract hauler that's hauling a guaranteed price for a period of time. Now, because of an ordinance we put in place, we've increased his cost. 
some cases that should avoid the contract. I don't know if municipalities want to deal with that as, as well, because you've you got a private enterprise that made a decision based on his cost and his organization, and now we're going to put an ordinance in and override what his costs are. Does that void his contract with the municipality? Well, and, you know, that's between him and the municipality and really not the counties, um, you know, entering into that other than, I mean, the municipalities have their own ordinances on recycling and their own contracts. So the, if I understand correctly, and, you know, let me know if I'm wrong, Malia, this applies more overall to the places that don't have a local ordinance or a local contract. Is that correct or am I not reading this right? That I can't answer that question today. I don't have the okay. information. I have to look at it. Okay. My yeah. Point out again, St. Craig Falls does not have this to my knowledge, not oh, yes. yeah. and does not exactly. have a contract relationship with the Hallman. Do we know, we got a bunch of villages here in Polk County too. Okay, do we know, does Balsam Lake have a contract? Does Milltown, does Frederick, does Luck? And we don't represent those communities maybe personally, some of us do, but um, you know, how, I guess I'm interested in knowing how the county ordinance is gonna integrate in with the local local ordinances and the local contracts with Holland. So, you know, I don't want to repeat myself, but I'm thinking we're doing an ordinance. Are we going to have to turn around and do this over again after the center of the recycling center is decided and budget time is here? So I don't know. Maybe we ought to consider addressing that before we spin our wheels and a bunch of stuff that is going to impact what's in that ordinance. One of the things we, we have to remember with, with the with the recycling ordinances for addressing recycling. Yes. As we get into uh, a St. Croix Falls, an Amory, a Luck, a Village with that, um, typically those contracts are written around uh, uh, waste disposal, your garbage, which, which recycling is attached to that. So our, our mandates here for Mandating recycling or statewide, yes, and those things. So when they talk contract calling, uh, typically they're either open or uh, one contractor or, or anyone can come in, and you can go with whoever you want. I know Republic met with St. Croix Falls administrator this week or end of last week on recycling and that type of stuff. So I'm not sure mm -hmm. on that. Uh, Republic Services um, met with them on that one. So when we talk recycling, we're kind of over broad. The over scope, which gives the communities the option of their contract hauler, but they still need to recycle. Was that just for recyclable hauling as opposed to solid waste generally? Or I think it was. I wasn't in that conversation. I just know he spoke with the administrator. And now, there's also a reference to the definition of department in our ordinance. It says uh, that the solid waste department and I guess we have a solid waste as part of the bigger department and the, the person in the, uh, the directory is Ron Pope. Does he have anything to do with the ordinance? He's my facilities manager, Rod Pope. Uh, where the departments when this was written was recycling solid waste department. So you talk solid waste and more appliances and the other side of recycling. Um, that's why we need to update this ordinance. It has a lot of nomenclature that's outdated. And one of the points, I think it needs updating generally regardless of yeah. the specifics of this that's instruction. Really, that's really phase one. That's phase, yes. And, and it would, I think, it, it, according to what Fran said, I, I think it would be very helpful to have a viewpoint of what each municipality is doing and how it might be affected by it. I guess I'd be interested, Malia, if you know, just a thought, if you can clarify that for us, how what we do here with, a, with an ordinance, how that's going to impact the municipalities who do have contracts or their own ordinances. I guess I don't know how that all would mesh and work together. I don't know if anybody else is interested in that or not, but. You know, our ordinance, like, it does need updating. I mean, one of the things it says in here is that you're not supposed to bring tires to an incinerator to burn. That, that law has been changed. 
and that's where we take ours is the waste energy facility in Barron County that disposes of them. So there are a lot of updates on there, but I will um, get you guys a draft. Yeah, yeah, I think at least get it to the point that it's current. Current. So yeah. probably the yeah. facts that are out, yeah. and then yeah. we can <laughs> know where it goes from there, right? And I, I think the educational factor is a big one. We could look, be looking at what we do by way of education, but when you come down to number one plastic, number two plastic, number five plastic, or whatever, I, I, I think there could be a much easier to understand maybe i don't know if they teach it in grade school or high school as to uh, science class or something other than just plastic but, uh, i'll be person living in whatever place in hope county knows it pages of definitions of what all these things are yeah, I mean, just to at least look at what's here current, and then I feel like before we can do anything else, we need to know what's going on with recycling. We need to make a decision. At, at, at this point, is there any prediction of for calendar year 2021 as to whether the recycling center was an increase in prices to lose a ton of money or, or break even or make a little money? Schedule on in the positive right now. Make a break in the black. Maybe. It needs to be in the black. Currently, right now, bar any breakdowns or anything. So I, I, have, there, I have talked to people in discussions. I said that it, a lot of that depends on right. fluctuations as right. to whether you're making a profit or losing. Matt, does that bring us to this? Yes. Okay. I don't want to be a step on anybody's toes here to be out of line, but I. I I'd answer them for you with the questions on the, on the front. The first page kind of showed the commodities from 19 to 20. You can see, um, you can kind of see the challenge on trying to budget and do that with revenues and project those with the commodities going up and down. On the back, kind of just gives you a, a summary again. You've seen these uh, in the reports of what our neighboring counties process. I got the one question, another. Take that run just to hold it up. This kind of a bottle is not recyclable at this point. Is this? It's number what? Number one. One and number two. Those are your common plastics. Your number fives are your kitty litter boxes. There's no number like that. on the bottom, or not one you can read. Not one you can read. Uh, your natural plastics are more your milk jug set, like that lighter white plastic. That's your natural plastics. Those are worth more valuable. So would it be accurate to say that now on plastics, we're not we're not sorting and bailing, whereas we're not maximizing the amount of revenue we could make on recycling because we don't have the capacity to do that. So if we did have the capacity to do that, that would open up a market for increase revenues by sorting those plastics well, it could increase your revenue and in turn increase your cost more than your revenue too if you didn't understand how that's going to lay out but and i think that the report we got from both did uh laid some of that out for us and what that expectation would be over time currently we try to separate it out as much as we can of the naturals that's the highest one which and if we can't then we make what's called a z bale and that's that's the the lower volume one currently right now republic buys our z bales they take our bales up to their facility and they break them down and resort them again to, to each other different price points so where do we go from here do we need to make a motion to ask Mo to bring forth a proposed recycling ordinance based on our discussion today do we need to i don't think you need a formal i think mo and i can certainly put our heads together for your next meeting sure. is that a consensus is everybody okay with that another thing that i didn't mention with licensing and these other these other ordinances do they require licensing and their one-year licenses renewable automatically or 
are issues like that that are not addressed in the full court. All right. Forward to the next month. That right. you got this. <laughs> you can go into the next um, couple LHB plans. Through LH, LHB right now, an update on that. They're on schedule. They're working on the mechanical drawings. We just we had uh, six core samples taken up the roof. Get the depth on there to make sure that we are not. Um, we're, when we're repairing the roof and replacing the roof, we don't have to add more insulation to meet the current code. So those those were sent off this morning. Uh, we are on schedule with our team meetings, and as soon as we get closer to like a seventy percent design, we can get that. You guys, things are going along. Okay. Not on the uh, long lines or early. I can add this chat. Does it matter which one I put it in? Uh, no, go ahead. Which one are you pulling up? Nobody. Make it work. Okay. Uh, the last meeting brought this property up. Uh, Hold on a second. Early Haney, did I Haney, Haney. Say that right. Haney. 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 Yeah. Haney. Uh, reached out and asked if uh, he could purchase this little sliver of land here behind us. Uh, that's on his property. This audit right here. Um, the last meeting uh, it was was made to offer him five hundred. He got uh, paid five hundred dollars and paid for a survey on that. Um, Druck asked if I go out there and take a look at it and see what's what it looks like. Uh, next slide, Chad. If you put the houses up in here, uh, this is a neighbor to the north. This is Charlie's property right here. This is a little strip of land we're talking about, the 1100, approximately 30 square feet, um, which is in its backyard on there. Next slide, Chad. And this is what it looks like. He mows it back there, and, that, and his counter offer was $250, and he'll Pay for the survey and paperwork and everybody gets done with that. Looking at the, you can go back to the next one. Um, the county really doesn't have any use for that sliver right there uh, to buy this off. Um, doesn't make any sense with that. So just asking for a approval to go ahead and move forward with selling that property at Haiti for. $250 and he'll take care of the surveying and everything. Like I that. think the value at 500 is fine. I mean, it's going to add to the value of his property, certainly by that amount. I don't know that the county needs to negotiate something like that. Okay. That'd be my take on it. Should we counter him? We said five, he said 250. The difference is 250. Should we counter him at 425? How's it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know. How bad, does, how bad does he want it? I mean, we don't need it. He's the one who wants it. I mean, we don't care. $500 is not very much money. It certainly adds more than that to the value of his property. Bigger piece, is it? Is 1,191 square feet. Well, what would that be compared to? 33,000. 63,000. 0.01. Point, it's it's point zero three acres. Yeah. What if we did nothing? If you could refer it to the planning committee where it's supposed to go through first anyway. <laughs> we could do that, but I mean, I, did you yeah, we're to... not quibbling over two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. Any yeah. land sold is supposed to go through the through planning. planning committee first. All right, let's move it there. Then. Yeah. 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 You know what? Any land sold or bought to the, is supposed to go through planning. Planning, and then it comes back to general government. Tax deed, right? <laughs> it's not a tax deed. Tax deed goes through, goes through but I environmental services, paid. county lands go through general yeah, government. 75 said it all went through. So, so it doesn't stay in the wellness committee or not. Hold on. It ends this committee. Not. Can we 
Emily is looking it up. Oh, sorry. Right now, my computer. Just one other comment I have. Go <laughs> back to the beginning. No, just for Mr. Mr. Pritchard. That's West, West Central, Central gave us. Back. No, Central gave us a toolkit on that uh, broadband. There's about eight pages. It's really good if we read that before the meeting. Which one? No, the broadband that you brought up first. There is a huge deal in here. To look this all yeah, up and show you all of it in the packet that they gave us. Well, thank you. That was one of their highlights that they did that year. So that all the different yeah, uh, toolkit. That toolkit yeah. is in our deal. So everybody should get that. We've been following that back things we've been doing. Right, right. We're we're kind of an available meeting here. You guys can have your own meeting so Leo, where are we at? Is this in this committee or this, not? This committee, uh right. 75 just relates to tax. Okay, and you want to make a recommendation? Do I make a recommendation that the county stands at five hundred dollars for each property and we move it forward if the individual would like to pursue it? Any more discussion on this? That includes him paying for the surgery, right? right. Okay. Yeah. All right. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Do you have the next one too? Um, if you're talking recycling fees, I can tell you about those. Otherwise, are we just talking recycling fees or all the fees? Proposed 2022 fee schedule. My guess is it's all of them. Yeah, Chad, who couldn't be here uh, regarding the fee schedule, said this is to be presented to you today for your review. And in next month's meeting, uh, we can address it, approve, or amend. We have almost yeah. done. And that's the normal process. He was just going to present it. It no, it, his words to me were there are no substantial changes. A slight increase in camping fees. Camping fees, um, a, a three three increases in recycling just on commodities, um, and light bulbs. Minor thing, mattresses went up five dollars or something, uh, but nothing substantial. Highway fees remain neutral um, with theirs, and I believe the. Alerts and those are statutorily set. So this is just, but I do believe it's on the county board agenda too, isn't it? August this month. Will we be approving schedule? No, I don't think we'll be approving it. Will we? Will we well, this? approving it similar to to have it included as a part of the oh. budget. Do we need to act on it this month? How is no, this is August. I think September. Those one will get yeah. more. He will send the resolution and final schedule to approve and then forward to the county board in September for approval. So would that I so they could still act on it before the September board meeting? Right, Mo. But it would have to already be placed on the county board. So it would be cleaner if they acted on it today. Right. To approve moving it forward to the county board for approval. Does anybody need more time to go through the fee schedule? I'd like to read it if I get it. Take three hour break <laughs> and we'll <laughs> All right, and we've gotten this spot before where we've actually met before calling the board. Yeah. We just met for five or 10 minutes because we did have it. We needed time to review what it's still. But you could, you would still have time at your next meeting before the September County Board meeting. Right. It would just already, the packet will have already gone out for yeah. the County Board. And it really doesn't matter because they can change it. They can change the fee schedule at county board. Correct. No matter what we do. But, all right, let's just keep it on for next month. We'll be last minute. Right now, we have it right now. All right, we're gonna 
have a discussion of possible action regarding an acceptance of a grant from the Wisconsin Department of Justice for this particular body and the purpose. I can touch on a little bit here. Um, I applied for a part of a COVID funding grant for a body scan. Basically, this body scan will be able to detect any contraband or weapons on an individual when they come in. It avoids us having to constantly pat somebody down and simply go into a machine, we scan them, see if they're concealing any weapons or contraband. Monitors their temperature as well, so they monitor themselves. Um, grant is for one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Are they already pre-approved for the grant? They just need the data to get um, from you, and then we can go through the RFP process. Resolution budget. Does the grant cover the entire purchase? Yes, it does. So, and I think what's on the next item on the agenda, if I'm correct, is if you approve it, we'll get the money, or we won't get the money at the feds. We'll go ahead and purchase it from our unassigned general fund. And then when the grant money comes in, it goes right back to the unassigned general fund. That's what we have. So need to know. Yeah. I have some questions now. Um, I kind of missed where did you say this would be in use at? In our county jail. Just in the jail only. Uh, it would would it be part of security like for the court, for circuit court? So I, I can touch on it briefly. Um one of the vendors we we chose for this uh, has a machine that's portable. We can get it to doorway, so it's that's what we like about it. So if we have a high profile case or something where we want to The grant is 100% funding for the body scanner. There's no match for it. Um, paid out this year. I noticed there were maintenance fees and warrants. Some put in separate $8,000 a year or whatever for maintenance. And had it included in their bid for the initial period. Of, I don't know if you selected which one you're going to buy yet or. You, or you that's all the kind of clear today to kind of yeah, go through the RP process and which one you selected for yourself. Yeah. Um part of our RP process is we required three years maintenance and warranty on the machine. And then it outlines what the machine is after it's been We have to accept the grant. That was there to be a motion motion to accept. Make a motion we accept the grant for $175,000 for the purchase of body scanner equipment. Second. That was $150,000. Right? Oh, I'm sorry, $150,000. Thank you. All right, any more discussion on the motion? All in favor? Okay. All right, now you need a uh, Action on the vendor, or is that what you're? Yes. So our RFP process, we we received three bids um, for the body scanner. Um, the first one I'll touch on is Tech 84. This is the one that uh, I've chosen that I'd like to go with for the purchase. Um, it's portable. Um, we don't have to do any other type of electrical upgrades with it. They're the most popular one in the state of Wisconsin. Assembled in the US. I mean, it just seems like a, a little more popular company in our area. Um, the other ones that we received to are Adani. Um, looking at their bid proposal, I think we'd have to get some electrical redone on it. Um, so the cost of that one would eventually be a little bit more. And then the other one we received was Image Systems. Um, the problem with this one is, is it's a moving machine. We wanted a stationary. What that means is the individual goes into the machine and stays in one spot. 
Whereas this imaging system one is they get on it, it's a conveyor belt system where they go through it. Um, that's where you have somebody who's inebriated or you know, under the influence of something that we're worried that they fall down and this machine comes back. So that's why we kind of eliminated moving system. Um, again, we, we'd like to go with Tech 84. Uh, the bid prices were all about the same. Um, on your sheet there, there was the proposal costs. Um, the imaging system was new, quite a bit cheaper, but again, it's a moving system, and I don't I think it costs a little bit of liability for the system. So, kind of felt plus it probably was more maintenance involved. Do you think guys know what you need and what's going to work for you? So, I think. Yeah, and I didn't understand is it, is it for use just to, uh, on prisoners or for visitors as well if you have the Well, it could be used for visitors as well. Our jail policy could be anything, and we haven't chosen our jail policy. We're, we're going with machine first, we'll develop policy that are appropriate for it. Um, but it could be used for anybody that's coming into the jail. Um, we have instructors or somebody who's doing some of the classes that we provide or Bible studies. We felt the need to, we could run them through that scanner. Um, but it's mostly for just the inmates. We've had a couple of cases where inmates have smuggled um, methamphetamine into our jail and this will hopefully eliminate that. I won't ask how they did it. So did you make a modeling for itself? Yeah, I'll make a motion that we follow the recommendations from the Sheriff's Department personnel and um, accept the uh, the recommended vendor. What one are you for? Second. Any more discussion on the vendor selection? Motion. All right, now we need to amend the 2021 capital and operating budget. Oh, we don't need, we need to recommend. And this grant is 100%, so we'll have to pay out the 150,000 for the scanner. So, yeah, this is budget. That we recommend to the county board to present cell this morning. One second, I had one question. I think the grant itself required a signed response within 30 days, and what the end our packet was signed. Is that so? Oh, yes, I did have Chris Nelson sign it back in. June, so we didn't lose out on the grant. It just basically held it in place for us until we get it. If it did get approved, we would just call the state basically telling we're not accepting it. All right, any more discussion on the motion? All in favor? Very good. Thank you. It right, looks like we're going to have a selection of the negotiating committee for WPPA contracts. So, how is this worked in the past? So, is there like a representative from various committees, or how does this work? Traditionally, this committee or its predecessor, um, Supervisor Arcan, has been the primary, or as long as I can remember, negotiator. Um, so he has that institutional memory of all, all of that, and then we work with the the sheriff, um, and then finance so it would be Roberts, and I would be in on it. But that's traditionally how it's happened, and it's gone very well in the record. Usually three from this committee. Actually, it's been the whole committee. We usually negotiate just set a period of time during our meeting. So. Go to closed session, negotiate. We just do it right during our committee. 
I would be happy to follow your lead, Ron. As I would be to follow yours. <laughs> well, maybe we can work together. <laughs> well, we'll be, yeah, only one. You usually only have one, like, spokesperson. Oh, well, so I that they're, they're the only one that really gets it. Everyone is there, but that participant. Because anything anyone says can. So everybody gets input and the rest of you get to speak. Yeah, we could take in a caucus is when we would discuss things. And then we actually met face to face, only one person. When are, when is that starting? Okay. Already okay. Gone all it start? It's already going to start. It's yeah. Fires at the end of the year, so and that they've requested that we meet. So they're requesting an opener. Yeah, so uh, we could do it like after the uh, September general government meeting would be one suggestion, or before or during. Yeah, or just have a closed session. Okay. So bargain. But actually, before we do that, we should meet as a I think that'd be a good idea because, you know, just through the course of time, we've noticed some things that need cleanup that will probably be very low hanging fruit. So we can come with all those easy ones and then talk about the big ones. Be okay. We'd be okay if we met as a committee, put on our agenda, like a proposal meeting for this committee. Okay. Upcoming negotiations. So Put on in October to meet with if they want to meet in October. And that way we can try to work with Chad and Don to get any comparables that we that we can get our hands on. I think that works Don. October to meet with them. Okay. Streeter, uh under the American Rescue Plan, if we got into premium pay at all in Oak County? We have not yet. No. That is one of the possibilities. Now, I don't know about the union. That'd be a contractual issue subject to bargaining? Well, I, I don't think that they would say no. <laughs> but we want four COVID days. <laughs> well, we can definitely, I mean, we can talk about that. If we're talking anything about you know, wages, we maybe should be talking about Everybody. full session. But we'll, we'll definitely see if that's not. All right, how about our 2021 work plan? Got anything we're not getting done or anything we need to be on there? Oh, I'm sorry, the work plan? Uh, nothing. Chad said there was really nothing to change on that, on the work plan. Uh, but you know we'll be coming talking about the budget, and we're going to have to we'll do our uh, annual reports. Chad is going to be here, but that's more on the agenda. So, if we did, if this meeting was said looking to have a recycling proposal. Um, yeah. Actually, on the work plan right now, and then we'll go to subject matters. But I mean, we'll make sure we get that site. And then the yeah, yeah, the work plan is just the annual report gets moved. We are going to say then that we have nothing to add to it. And then September the This has a column with agenda. Schedule agenda items. Is that we 
would that be a scheduled, scheduled agenda item in September? Yeah. Scheduled agenda items. Do we list the scheduled agenda items? Oh, no. That's just our plan of things we want to work on in that month. We don't look agenda items on our work. So that's an LPL. incorrect label on that column, sir. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I could call it anything, I guess. It's, I, I it's think just yeah. our goals, what we should be working on, like when we should be. Starting on our budget. Yeah. So we schedule the, the major events that we have to click off, and then we also add in there goals, their goals for money. Possibly change the name of the thing. Yeah, I think that's confusing with the change. All right, so we're going to say we have nothing more for the work plan, and we'll take subject matter for a second. We now lost a uh, closed session for the proposal presentation. Oh. And did you want something on recycling? So we're going to have the recycling ordinance, but did you want more discussion? Review of proposed recycling ordinance, including the label. And uh, I don't know. We, in my opinion, would. I don't know what committee is appropriate yeah. at this one or a full county board committee as a whole. I don't know, but I would like to see uh, before we get too far in recycling ordinance, I think we need to address the future of the recycling center. And however that should be done, that's my opinion. I don't know what the committee consensus is. If they want to kick that down the road and, and put together and clean up this ordinance, First, then address it. But as far as incorporating and developing new things in an ordinance, I feel like that would need to be quicker we can in quite a while. Well, then let's quickly. I'm finish. just kind of wondering, and this for clarification. Let's to the ground. <laughs> if if we, I'm thinking if the option is A or B, get rid of the recycling center or keep it. How do we do that without having a clear idea of what we think our future policy is going to be? See, and I don't think I, I vice versa, kind of with it, with yeah. that with you, Ben. How can we develop a policy? It's, I mean, we can clean up this ordinance and make it current, and obviously that needs to be done in any event. Let's put it. Let's put it on the agenda because that's the item we're on. It's an item for the next meeting. Phrase it how you would like it on the agenda so we can. Consideration of the future of the full county recycling center. Okay. What's the next one? Any other items? So, Mr. Chair, there's a possibility. It's not. Um, it's not an absolute for sure thing that there might be a grievance hearing in front of this committee. Uh, we're right now trying to work through potential settlements. So. It might not, but I wanted to let you know it would be through the sheriff's department. This is the, the grievance committee for uh, any disciplinary appeals. That's what this would be. And um, because it might take time, I don't know that if, if it did happen, if you would want to put it on a regular committee meeting or if you would want to hold it a different day or in the evening some days as a separate meeting. But I just wanted to put that on your radar. If it does come, we'll be reaching out to you as the chair to schedule that. So you're not surprised if it does. Anyone else have a subject matter for the next meeting they'd like to get on the agenda? Think of something. Well, I just thought of the wording of that. I just so I understand this correctly, the future of the recycling center will be a recommendation to the County board, it won't be a decision, correct? Yeah, we can't either. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify that. All right, if you think of something else you want to get on there, I guess get a hold of me or events or get a hold of somebody in the city.
Thing locked the door. <laughs> I will assume that would be to adjourn. All in favor? Uh, and adjourn at 11 30. 29, I know. 29. Yeah.